let's say that you are working on a game and you want and you have a situation where you have a NPC that needs to rotate towards a certain target at a fixed amount of time and is not constantly rotating towards it or is uh, um, we're going to use something called a quaternion dot lerp and this is um, in the built-in Unity API and the whole point is that we can give it a starting rotation value an ending rotation value and then a a journey type of uh, variable that scales from 0 to 1 to have us smoothly rotate from one angle to the next. And we're going to use quaternions uh, because that's what Unity likes. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to take our character, we're going to give it a new script, and we're going to create a script that's going to allow us to do that functionality. So we're going to call it a lerp rotation and what we're going to do is we're going to adapt uh, the unity unity uh, code and fashion it to how we want it and so I'm just going to copy and paste it over here and make sure that my lerp rotation uh, name for the class is there on, or I'll run into some problems and so what's nice about this code is that we're going to use the quaternion.lerp and we need to feed it three values. And what's important for Unity, uh, sorry, for the quaternion.lerp is that we need to have a starting rotation. In this case, it's going to be our current rotation and then a target rotation, which is representing the angle that is from us to the target. And then where in that rotation we want to be uh, getting to. So let's get rid of some things that we don't need and then we're going to create some variables that we do need to help keep track of that. We're going to need a vector3 variable that we're going to call relative position and this represents uh, the difference in space from for our character and that object in, uh, that we want to be targeting. Secondly, we're going to have a quaternion dot a quaternion that we're going to call target rotation. And this represents uh, not the positions in space, but where our nose needs to turn towards to be facing our target. And so our target is going to move over, over uh, this scene area, and we want the nose to be following that. And that quaternion is going to represent the angle that we want to be turning to. Cool. So uh, those are the two variables that we need right now. And we're going to change this to be changed from two to target our target object. This uh, later we're going to use uh, the inspector to drag in that sphere into this field represented by target as the transform. And so we need to go back and we're going to change this from from dot rotation to our own transform dot rotation. And this means the object that this script is attached to has a rotation and we're going to use that. So it's going to be attached to our character that's going to rotate and we're going to use its current rotation. From there we're going to use our uh, I believe it's going to be, we're going to call it our target rotation. Target rotation. And that means once we've zeroed in on the location of our target, this is going to be where our nose needs to point in the end. So let's just uh, move on from there. We need to do some we're going to break it up into a targeting phase and then a rotation phase. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that our relative position is going to be equal to our current position, uh, the difference between that and us and our target. So our target.position minus our transform.position. So all this math is doing is figuring out the difference between where our target in space is compared to us in space. 
and we're going to use that relative position to figure out where our nose needs to point to. And we, how we do that is we're going to update our target rotation to be equal the quaternion dot look rotation of our relative position. So these two lines, what it's doing is, let's go back into Unity, we're saying, oh, we have this object in space and this object in space. The difference of those is going to help us to know where we need to look, or our character needs to look, to be facing it. The resulting uh, variable is the, our target rotation, and we're going to take that and we're going to stick that in here so that it knows where we need to be rotating towards at all times. From there, we want to say that we only want this to happen, or we only want to target at a certain time, and we want that to happen when we press spacebar. And so let's say that we're going to create a condition to say that if uh, we're going to use any of these uh, input class, input.getKeyDown, um, where is this? Get key down. And we're looking for a specific key, and we're going to say that it's going to be our key code dot space. You can pick whatever key that you want. In this case I'm using space. And so if we separate this phase right here then we this only gets the target when we hit the space bar. And so our character could be looking off at a different spot and doesn't know where this, the, our target is but when we hit space then we're going to be getting that rotation that we want to use. Cool. So once we've done that then we can we'll, we'll create some conditions and we're going to use a boolean to say that we want to be rotating after we've targeted. And so we're going to target first and then after that we're going to want to be rotating. So we're going to set our rotation rotating bool to be false and then once we've gotten our target then we're going to set that rotating boolean to be true. From there we're going to say that if we are, if our boolean is true, then we want to be actually rotating, like that. At this point, um, we want to understand how quaternion lerp actually works, and so this can be confusing for some people. We want to imagine, I'm going to use some comments down here, to say that we're rotating, uh, we want to be rotating from uh, rotation A all the way to rotation B. And it could be whatever angle that we think we're going to, right? And this that represents our first two arguments. We're rotating from A and going to B. And this last one represents where in that journey from A to B that we're going. And this is represented as our third argument. And you want to think about this that this value is going to be an analog from A to B, but represented numerically from A from 0 to 1. And this is going to be uh, a float value. So at any given time, if we are going from A to B, we can say that we want to jump to that specific angle represented from 0 to 1. So if I say that we're starting at, if our, this value is 0, then we're going to be at our starting location. If this value is at 1, then we're going to be at our ending location. But let's say that our value is at 0.5, then we're going to be at half our resulting angle. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So that we can say that uh, oftentimes you, people use a time factor to, to do the math to make this happen, but you don't necessarily need to have time to, to make that happen. But you want to understand that this is actually a value that goes from 0 to 1, representing from our starting uh, rotation to our ending rotation. In this case, we are going to use time, but a different way than Unity usually does it. And what we're going to do is, um, I, want, I usually represent it using a float value. And uh, I want to make sure that it goes from 0 to 1, meaning our starting rotation all the way to 1. And when we get to 1, that's, that's our ending location, rotation. And so let's say that we're going to call this our rotation time being, oops, when 
when rotation time equals one, we will will have rotated to our target. When it's at zero, then we're starting from our starting uh, rotation. So if our rotation time is, a, is represented from zero to one, then we need to make sure that when we start, we are always starting at zero, right? And so once we hit our spacebar and we get our target, then we want to update our rotation time to be zero. And if we set this rotating to be true, then we need to increment from zero to one somehow, right? And we can do this by adding, uh, updating our rotation time to be uh, the value of our time dot delta time. And so as the game runs on and we this is happening inside update, then this value should be increasing. Then we're going to take our rotation time and stick it into here. So we know that once we have targeted our object, it's going to set our rotation time to zero. That means we're going to start from this angle. And as time increments, we should be moving up to one. And as we get to one, then we should have arrived at our target rotation. Lastly, we can say that once it gets to um, our resulting angle, a ro rotation angle, then we want it to, to get out of our rotating Boolean and allow us to hit space again. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say that if uh, rotation time is greater than 1, then we want to set our rotating Boolean to be false. So that means once we've gotten all the way to one, anything beyond one is going to keep us from rotating. We're, like, we're not going to rotate anymore because we've already arrived there. Then we want to automatically set our rotating to be false. Cool. So let's go ahead and try this now. We're going to save and build. And then we're going to go into our Unity environment. And then look at that object. And let's make sure that your script is attached to the object that you want. I have a long nose to help us see the rotation of it. And it's sitting here, lerp rotation. I have an empty field called target. And I want to fill it with a game object in the scene. That way we can take its transform location, transform position, sorry. And uh, lastly, we have a speed factor that we're not using yet. Well, let's go and throw in that speed factor because maybe we realize that our, our rotation is too slow for us, right? And let's just uh, increase this by putting our speed factor here. Maybe we'll put our speed like this. And this is going to allow us to get to our resulting uh, angle faster or slower. So let's test this out. Let's go here, go back into Unity, um, and we're going to hit play. I have my game window down here just so that we can see it. I don't, I didn't want to mess with my camera at the moment, but as long as we can keep our game window open, then we can test this out. We have a ball that's moving around. I haven't hit spacebar yet, but I'm going to go ahead and hit spacebar. And then we see our nose rotate and it's stuck like we wanted to to be at where the ball was when we hit spacebar. And so this ball is still moving around. I'm going to hit spacebar again. And we should see it moving towards that ball. And sometimes it doesn't meet it because the ball has already moved after we hit spacebar, right? And we can say, oh, maybe we're not rotating fast enough. What can we do about that? We can go and go back into our inspector for the object that has a script on it and increase this speed. So maybe we want this to be uh, slightly faster. So it went from 0.1 to 0.8. We should be able to see that we're going to rotate 
quicker. And as this ball is, is uh, moving around, you can see that our nose is still following it. I'm going to hit spacebar again. You see that's rotating. Spacebar again. And it's updating its position or its rotation, finding the ball and rotating quickly. If it's not moving fast enough for you, then uh, go ahead and change that speed. But uh, you'll notice that what's the, it's doing exactly what we want. Every time we hit spacebar, it's updating the position of our target and then figuring out what we need to get to. We're using time right now that has to reset from zero to uh, a value of one because we know that lerp uses this third argument to say that zero represents our starting rotation and one is going to mean once we get to one we're going to have arrived at our resulting rotation. I hope this makes sense to you. If you have any questions please uh, comment or send me an email. Um, that's it for now. I'm going to post this code in uh, the bottom of this video. I uh, hope this works for you. Thanks. Bye.